This video is for entertainment purposes only. Do not reproduce what you see in these films. Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video we're going to be installing fascia. Some would call it sub fascia since it's not the actual finished board going on. But we're going to do this by ourselves without having two people. It's just going to be me and my little homemade L bracket. And I'm going to show you how it's done. It's not too complicated like anything else in construction but it's something you need to learn to do if you're going to be working by yourself. So we're going to start down here on this end, right here where the ladder's at. And the first thing we got to do is get a measurement and cut that first fascia board. So if you're using 16 foot material, which most people do, they get the longest material they can get for their fascia boards. If we start on this end with the ladder, where the ladder's at, it's going to take us over about right in here somewhere. So if it's going to break clear over there, we need to come back one rafter or two. It really it doesn't have to be that particular, but come back and then we mount the L bracket onto the bottom of that rafter and it's going to help support that fascia board as we're nailing it off going across. Let me show you. Okay here is the L bracket up close. If you look and see here it's about six inches from here to here because we're using two by six material and depending on your fascia, you're going to maybe have to go down to 8 or 10, depending on what size fascia you're using. But most people use 2x6s for fascia. And uh, I put about 18 inches, maybe 14 inches or so, enough room here so I don't have to worry about it sliding off while I'm working with the fascia board. So I just want to give you a little close-up, just two decking screws holding that on there. And you want to make sure you're not past the edge of this rafter. To get this first measurement, I measure over, get a measurement to one rafter and then measure from that rafter to the end because your tape is typically not strong enough to measure that whole length and then that's how I calculate it. So when you cut your fascia board, you want to go flush on the end of the roof and then you want to break in the middle of a uh, rafter. So you need to break in the middle of a rafter so that way you have a place to nail one side of your fascia then the next one it comes in a place to nail that side. So let me grab that board, I already cut it. I'm gonna walk up on this ladder and get started. And if you watch me when I go up the ladder, I'm gonna put one side of the fascia board up on that L bracket, and then I'm gonna carry the other side up the ladder, and then I'm gonna nail it off as I go. So the technique here is pretty straightforward. You put the one side of the fascia board up on the L bracket that we made, and then you just grab the other side, as you just see me do there, and carry it up the ladder. And then as I hold with one hand, I go ahead and nail it with the other. So this is something that is way easier to do if you have a pneumatic nailer. But if you don't, just go ahead and pre-start a nail in the fascia board. And then once you get it up there, you just take your hammer and drive that nail all the way in to hold it. And after you do that, you just want to make sure you nail about six nails, five to six nails in each rafter or truss, whichever uh, one you're using here. And then just keep moving from one side to the other. Since your fascia board typically isn't perfectly straight because it is just regular lumber, you do gotta work it like trim, so sometimes you gotta flex it up and down and stuff like that. So, you know, as you're going across, just keep that in mind. And then if you look here, I'm just nailing right at that joint, several nails. And now since the fascia board's all nailed off, just remove that L bracket, which is the two decking screws and that fascia board's installed. All right, I just wanted to give you a close up of the work. And like I said, on this side, you want to make sure you get it flush with the other overhang that's coming down intersecting the fascia and then on this side over here like you've seen in the video you want to make sure you break it in the middle of a rafter so if you can look there it has plenty of meat on it to nail the next one so that's where the next one's going and we're going to use a 16 footer do the same method and let's get up here on the ladder i just wanted to show you a close up of where it's nailed down through the sheathing. If you look here, this is where you nail the sheathing into the fascia board. So that way, if you have any high winds, anything like that, you wanna make sure it's nailed off real well. And typically you would use those two and three eighths nails. But in this case, so you don't change nails while you're putting your fascia in, you just use your regular uh, three inch nails. So, and if you look here, I don't know if you've seen the video of me putting the felt paper on, but that's why you don't nail to the very edge so you can lift it up to nail your sheathing into your fascia board. So I just want to give you a close up of what it looked like. 
Okay, I'm starting the next piece here now. And you know, the other benefits to not using someone to help you in using this L bracket is you don't have to carry benefits on it. You don't have to pay it. You don't have to worry about it running off. You don't have to worry about it uh, showing up on time, stuff like that. But it is a little bit lonely working by yourself all the time. So you got that to deal with. But you know, financially, it's the way to go. Um, and I've also had people message me say, hey, I've used a nail, I've used stuff like that, I've used a uh, clamp instead of using a nail bracket, and that's fine too. Whatever works for you, I just know this L bracket pit thing works for me well. And it is a little bit of a hassle having to take it and screw it in and all this, which, uh, you know, for me it's not that big a deal. But if you uh, don't want to do that, you could try the nail trick. I think they just take a nail and then bend it over underneath the rafter or truss to hold your fascia board. But I just like the security of having a nail bracket. Here I am removing the L bracket now. And uh, sometimes it can be a pain to take the L bracket off. Uh, trying to reach up under there when you can't see the screws. But it's not that bad. Another thing I want to tell you, if you're using 16 foot material, if your trusses are set either 2 foot on center or 16 on center, a 16 footer even should break right in the middle of the rafter. But if you did get off on your layout a little bit, it isn't going to, so always double check a measurement before you just cut one exactly 16 foot, because 16 footers are usually 16 and a quarter. So. All right, here I am on the third piece of fascia going up. And if you have ever installed fascia alone, I want you to leave a comment below on how you did it. I'm really curious to see the other techniques out there. I already mentioned a couple I told you before people were telling me, but you know, everybody has their own way. And uh, if you would not install fascia alone, let me know that in the comments below too. I'm, you know, I'm wondering uh, why you wouldn't want to do it alone or why you would do it alone. And here I am just nailing it off. And uh, if you see me right there, I just pried up a little bit and use it on that L bracket because it must have uh, had a little low spot on one of the rafters. But if you've been working with wood for a certain amount of time, you'll realize, you know, you just got to work with it. You can't force it to do what you want, but you can finesse it some to make it look very nice when it's all said and done. Here I am starting the fourth piece of fascia. If you notice, I got two ladders, and that is because the grade here changes uh, significantly. It has a little hump here that still needs graded, so I could not get the big ladder over here to do it, and uh, that's why I have the shorter ladder. And another word of caution, when you're putting up this fascia, the nail gun you can see is kind of level with your face. <laughs> so be very careful, wear safety glasses, the whole nine yards, um, don't angle that gun towards you, stuff like that. If you're wondering what that whining noise is you hear every so often, that's my air compressor filling up with air. It's only a five gallon Hitachi air compressor. It, uh, you know, it's fine for this application, but if you're running multiple nail guns, you probably want to upgrade to like a 10, 20 gallon. All right, I'm about to show you how to do a fascia board that's under 10 foot long by yourself without a nail bracket. You really can't do this with a 16 footer. I mean, you could try, and if things work out right, it's probably doable but it's definitely easier with the l bracket so i'm going to show you a shorter one how you can do it by going in the middle of the fascia and going up and holding it and shooting it at the same time let's do this all right so you see i just tacked it now that's holding it up there it's easy to do with a shorter board, but with a long one, very difficult. And then you just nail it off like normal. All right, that fascia is on this side and finished. All right, that's the final product behind me. It turned out really nice, and I did it all without anybody's help. So I hope that helped you figure out how to do your own project. And if you haven't done it yet, be sure to subscribe to this channel and smash that like button and ring the bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video. And thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.